we are headed to Friskogora Mountain, where there are a lot of Spomaniks, I'm told, by a Belgrade, which is where we are now. And oh, look at this! Look, a communist, a communist fountain from 1989, marking the occasion of the Non-Aligned Country Summit. But before we head up Friskogora Mountain for our Spomanik run, here is another Yugoslav-era monument in Belgrade. This is a monument to the Belgrade dock workers who were killed during World War II, 1954. Radeta Stankovic was the artist, and he used as his model a local Belgrade wrestler. Monument to the Holocaust. Around 6,300 women and children were killed here in Belgrade by mobile gas trucks at the camp across the river. Now for a breakfast burger at the Silosi Beograd Burger Festival. And on our first Gagora, I got a truffle burger. First Gagora is known for truffles. Bye bye. So how do you like your burger, Emma? It was amazing. How do you like your burger, Bianca? It was perfect. My truffle was okay. It's a Yugo. All right, and now no stop till Vrška Gora, the jewel of Serbia, leaving Belgrade now. Here's the brutalist western city gate uh, we visited it last week when Bianca's parents were in town. I'll put up a few pictures now for your enjoyment. Speaking of last week, I also saw a Spomanik and I didn't tell you about it. I didn't record it. I did take some photos. It was in Zemun, Belgrade, Monument to Fallen Fighters, 1954. It was completed when the artist was only 30 years old. I lied. I said no stop till Prushka Gora. That is, unless we see a Spomanik. We're in the village of Krnje Shevci and Monument to Fallen Fighters. The plaque here says it was completed in 1982, specifically October 24th, 1982. So that was a World War II monument by Jan Stupovsky. And uh, now, no stop to Fushka Gora. It's about an hour drive from Belgrade, all told. Uh, you know, uh, it's been it's been noted that Bianca doesn't smile enough in the car. Like, she's not enthused about Spomaniks. But the thing is, is um, when you're Romanian and you smile, it means you're a whore. It does not. It absolutely does not. Okay, my, my misunderstanding. Anyway, this, this drive right now is a trip down memory lane from almost a whole month ago. We're driving through Sremska Mitrovica now. And uh, yeah, we were here not too long ago. We had some spicy hot cold beer from Igorium. You gotta check that out. Really, you know, beer that burns your mouth and is refreshingly cool. Anyway, um, there was a Spomanik in that area we saw in Stanovci. Uh, again, I didn't record it, but I took some pictures and here, here it is for you. It's the Bridge of Exchange Monument from the early 70s. It marked a place where German prisoners and uh, partisans were exchanged during World War II. This is Prushka Gora Mountain behind me. It doesn't look very impressive, does it? At its highest point, it's only 539 meters. Its western end extends into eastern Croatia. We're not going to be at that part. We'll stay in the Serbian administered area. Yeah, it may not look too impressive from a distance, but uh, it's got a lot of good things going for it. You know, it's Serbia's oldest national park, 
and um, I believe the first vineyard was planted here by the Romans. Marcus Aurelius Probus was born in this area. A Roman emperor was born here in this area. Actually, 18 Roman emperors were born in Serbia. Anyway, this guy, Probus, planted the first uh, vineyard on Fruskogora Mountain. It's one of the oldest viticulture in Serbia. It's one of the oldest in all of Europe. We're still in Sremska Mitrovica municipality, a village called Lezimir. Walking up a bunch of unkept stairs. Should be a sculpture at the top. We're not in Pushkagora National Park yet. So close though. Watch out for snakes, Beloga. We've reached the top. Nice view of the village below here. This is Pavle Radovanovich's bronze sculpture, Monument to Fallen NOB Fighters, World War II Fighters. It's a really overgrown area. It's not easy to get close. In fact, I'm not going to get close. Welcome to Fushka Gora National Park. Just stopped at a picnic area, Rohal Bases Picnic Area. And you can see the sign here. It says that Rohal Bases were named after the underground bases that were the hideouts of the local population, which withdrew during the Second World War. And the hideouts were located on the property of a family, Rohal, from Divosh. That's the town we're in right now, Divosh. Hence the first part of the name. And this is a memorial house here. It was built in 1972, and displays from NOB, the National Liberation Movement, were exhibited here. A ton of mosquitoes here at one of the most beautiful vantage points in Frischkogora. And it's here that the Partisan base existed during World War II. This memorial complex was designed in 1972 by Zrenjanin engineer Milorad Berbakov, Berbakov, something like that. It wasn't just partisans here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there were also inhabitants of surrounding villages who were trying to escape the terror of the Ustasha forces at the time. Now, political workers were stationed here as well. At the time when Ustasha forces were raiding Srem, this Rohail base was a somewhat free and protected area. Our three nights in Fuskagora might be three nights too many if these mosquitoes are any indication. Should we try our luck with another Spomanik with these mosquitoes? No. Uh -huh. Just fuck it? We've just entered the village of Svilosh. And the village of Svilosh has a Spomanik, monument to fallen NOB fighters. As mentioned, Pushkagora has one of the oldest histories in Europe of wine production, dating back to the Illyrians. But the flourishing of viticulture in this area dates to the ancient Romans, around 200 AD. Kind of died down under the Turks, and then it was brought back when the Turks were expelled. And to celebrate that, the expulsion of the Turks, we're gonna check out a winery. stopped in the village of Cherovich and saw about 20 signs for different wineries. We're gonna try out this one. What winery is this one? Verkat. The 
it's very much smaller. So we got uh, wine of the Malvasia grape for about $10. After a cappuccino, ready to push on, we're in Beochin, and it is the home of Beochin Cement Factory, a factory that was co-owned by Edward Spitzer. Edward Spitzer built a mansion in Hungarian secession style, right near a cement factory. It's called the Spitzer Castle, and the guy he hired to build it is the same guy who built that giant Hungarian parliament building in Budapest. We're gonna try to beat the rain. Check it out. I think this means we can't enter the Spitzer Castle. So the Spitzer family moved into this mansion in 1889 and just before World War II, they moved back to Germany. And after World War II, the mansion was nationalized by Yugoslavia and it hosted a school and a library, a radio station, a restaurant, and eventually was abandoned. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've seen this before. It does look familiar, doesn't it? 1970s film, Kelly's Heroes, American war film. It starred Clint Eastwood, and they shot it here at Spitzer Castle. Legend has it that Edward Spitzer's daughter killed herself here at the castle when her parents forbid her from seeing her love and that she still haunts this building to this very day. Should I go up some more? No. No? No. Eh, not worth it. Okay. Edward built this house right at his cement factory so he could oversee all of the operations. And you can see some of the uh, elements of that factory right out the window here. Beochin has a spomanic, and Bianca wants to see it. Beochin also has a monastery. It's one of 35 monasteries that were built on this mountain. It's why Fruška Gora has a nickname, Serbian Mount Athos. And since we're in Beochin, we might as well visit the monastery here. This monastery at Beochin is one of 17 surviving Serbian Orthodox monasteries. The date of founding is unknown, but Ottoman Turkish records mention it in 1578. <laughs> So this is a women's monastery, and as you can see, and they do have a reputation for this, the nuns are really bitchy. This is one of the few monasteries on Fruška Gora that wasn't majorly damaged during World War II. Interesting fact, the garden here was designed by gardeners who maintained the garden at Versailles. To quote my dear cousin Jakob in Vrshatz, there's no such thing as a mean monk. 
but I'm petrified of the nuns. I think we can get in one more site before it starts raining. This is Pavlasov Chot. It's the second highest peak on Prushka Gora. And marking the second highest peak at 531 meters is a memorial to Ignat Pavlas. He was the founder of the Novi Sad Mountaineering Society, the first mountaineering society in all of Vojvodina. Pavlas was killed together with his wife along with some 4,000 civilians by the Hungarians in the infamous Novi Sad raid. Their bodies were thrown under the ice in the Danube. And this peak is named after him. And now to a town called Verdig. I'm gonna spend two nights there. Home sweet home in rainy Vernik. Here's what 20 euros a night can get you on Frischka Gora. Can you see the rainbow? Specialty of the Srem district, spicy Srem sausage, homemade in this case. Morning, day two, breakfast. We're calling this a Vernik breakfast on the menu. Vernik has a spomenik. Uh, this one was put up in 1950. And it's for the uh, victims of fascism and fallen fighters of the NOB. World War II Spomenik. So we're taking a seven minute drive to a village called Yazak, said to be the prettiest village in Serbia under a thousand people. Yazak has a 1958 World War II monument. Yazak is known for its, its goat cheese. That sign for goat cheese, that was a wild goose chase. Place is closed, confirmed by the neighbors. Yazak is known for its uh, bottled water as well. Bottled water. That's a bottled water factory. Fresh water from Yazak. So that's Yazak. Um, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily. Cute town. There's a, a lake as a result of some mining operations about 15 minutes from here. Beshanovo Lake. It's supposed to be one of the most beautiful places to swim in all of Serbia. Maybe this village of Mala Rameta has some goat cheese for us. Let me 
see goats back there. Are those goats making cheese? Nope, no famous goat cheese anywhere. Here it is, Beshanovo Lake. This lake was formed in 2004 on a surface mine where limestone was exploited for the needs of the Beochin cement factory. Remember Spitzer Castle, Beochin cement factory? And the water is so clear. I think I gotta go in. You stick your feet in here and little fish start nibbling on you. And now a 25 minute drive up and down Fruskagora to Novo Hopovo, an area known for its wine. That big city out there across the Danube, that's Novi Sad. Look at this tourist information board. That's a lot of, a lot of monasteries and wineries on Frskagora. See, we are here and we are driving to number 12 right now, Novo Hopovo Monastery. This is Serbian Viagra. <laughs> this is Novo Hopovo Monastery. It was built in 1576. And it was on these slopes, the southern slopes of Fruskagora, that Roman Emperor Probus started viticulture. And that's why this area, I guess, is known for its wine. The fresco painting in Hopovo is one of the most significant on the Balkan artistic area. The icons on the iconostasis were made by the most prominent Serbian Baroque painter, Teodor Kratun. This is not a monastery for women. There are no nuns here. And so you'll note that we had no problems at all taking pictures or videos. In fact, one of the monks even showed us what to take photos of. You know, I was just thinking, maybe the nuns at Beochin Monastery yesterday, maybe they're the exception. Maybe not all nuns are so ornery. Uh, there's another nunnery about 20 minutes from here, back in Verdedic, where we're staying for the night. Uh, how about we check out, how about we check out that monastery and uh, see how the nuns treat us there. Serbian goulash break. So this is the third and last of the monasteries I'm gonna show you on Fruska Gora, of which there are many, as you know, Serbian Mount Athos. This is the Verdnik Monastery, and it is a monastery for women. Before it was a woman's monastery, uh, there were monks here, and they were so poor that they would travel often to Russia for material help in building this monastery. Fortunes of this monastery took a turn to super rich when the relics of the Serbian medieval Prince Lazar, also known as Tsar Lazar, were transferred to here. In 
1989, the relics were returned to Ravanitsa as part of the commemoration for the 600th anniversary of the Battle of Kosovo. But this monastery, Verdnik, did get to keep one piece of relic, and it is displayed in the coffin up by the altar there. Day three on Fruska Gora. Uh, I don't think I mentioned it before. Verdnik is a spa town. Very important. That's practically the whole reason it exists. It's a spa town. There's a number of uh, spa resorts, and this one here is Movenpick. 20 bucks for half a day to use uh, one of their, you know, thousand pools. I realized I was a little lazy as far as Spomanix go yesterday, and I promise I'll make it up to you today. But first, Bianca wanted to hike up a mountain here. In Verdnik, we're heading up to Verdnik Tower. So this Verdnik Tower is part of the former fortification of the town of Verdnik. And it was first mentioned in historical documents in 1315. But they found a lot of Roman objects under the tower. Leads people to believe that there was a much older building originally, dating back to the Romans. Particularly to the era of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius Probus, who was ruling part of the Roman Empire from his home in Sremska Mitrovica, nearby. They got a, a ladder that takes you to the top. Nice. You know, they say that about 90 million years ago, Fruscagora Mountain was an island in the Pannonian Sea. Now, we're gonna leave Vernik and drive around Fruscagora Mountain, stopping at every Spomanik we see, and we're gonna to head toward the direction of Sremski Karlovci. It's where we're gonna stay for the night. It's a town northeast of Fruscagora, and it is said to be one of the most beautiful towns in Serbia. Right, we're in Rakovac, and this is the Kamenolum Memorial Complex. Kamenolum is quarry, and it's dedicated to the residents of this village, as well as workers of the quarry who joined the partisans and fought against fascism. It was right here at this mine that they took the partisan oath. On this wall are the names of the fallen partisans and the killed residents of Rakovac. You know my favorite part of this memorial complex? A giant mosaic of Yugoslav President Josip Tito. Okay, I'm heading up to pay respects to Tito. If Bianca can do it, I can do it. It's my motto. That's what I was going for. Here's the view from the top. And I guess this would be housing the remains of some of the fighters. And I was so excited about the mine part of this complex, especially the Tito mosaic, haven't really given any attention to the Spomanek here. We're doing a drive-by of Rakovac Monastery. Based on legend, it was founded in the 1400s. Here's a Spomanik in Ledinci. 
It's a monument to the victims of fascism. 1973, and the artist, you know him, Pavle Radovanovich. He's the one that did the father and son monument up in Lezhemir. Remember on top of that hill, father, son, in the middle of overgrown brush. So it looks like a pomegranate. Your car is the best! You hear that, Tahir? My car is the best. Yeah, make yeah. us famous! <laughs> make us famous! So I told those kids, you know, my friend Tahir drives a Jeep and I drive a Toyota FJ Cruiser. Which car is the best? And you heard their response. And by the way, and you can vouch for this, that was with zero prompting. It really was. I mean, they literally just came up and said, your car is the best. Here's the biggest spomenik on Frushkogora Mountain, the Yugoslav era Monument to Freedom, 1951. The author of this memorial site is Sretin Stojanovic, and he used limestone excavated here on Frushkogora. The woman at the top of the obelisk is the embodiment of freedom. And these figures at the base are the partisans. Until the 1960s, the Spomeniks being created in Yugoslavia mirrored what they were creating in the Soviet Union. Um, socialist, realist sculptures. And Tito and Stalin started hating each other and Tito wanted to have his own style of monument in Yugoslavia and they became abstract in the 60s. So when you see socialist realist monuments in Yugoslavia, that dates it to the 50s or earlier, usually. Surrounding the sides is a bronze relief with scenes depicting the, the struggle, the suffering, the resistance. I note two swastikas. Here's one on an overturned tank. And here's another on an upright tank. eastbound through Fruška Gora for about 25 minutes and we arrive in one of Serbia's most beautiful towns, Sremski Karlovci. Not too far from the Monument to Freedom are the remains of a TV tower bombed by NATO in 1999. We've arrived, Sremski Karlovci, and first order of business is to try Bermet. Bermet, it's like vermouth. It's a, it's a dessert wine. It comes from this town, and uh, they say it was on the wine list on the Titanic, and it was used to bribe Maria Teresa. Yeah, the Vienna court loved it. It was exported to America for a time in the 19th century, and it so happens that our, our landlord owns a winery here. What do you want to try? Uh, Bermet. Bermet. Certain types yes. of uh, grass and uh, yes. uh, orange. Uh, all in one wine. All in one wine. <laughs> See, like a Bernet. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, so what did we just buy? One Fila white wine and two Bermet. Yeah, the Bermet was really good. She said it's made with like 17 different kind of spices. It's really aromatic in the mouth, if you can imagine that. So we're gonna drop this wine back off at home and then take a little walk about.
Karlovci Grammar School, Serbia's first grammar school, founded 1791. It was 1891 for this building uh, by a Hungarian architect. Sremski Karlovci was the seat of the Serbian Orthodox Church during the Habsburg Monarchy. So this is St. Nicholas Cathedral, Serbian Orthodox, and it's considered the finest example of Serbian Baroque architecture in the entire country. This church was built from 1758. This is the Four Lions Fountain. Drink from this 1799 Baroque fountain and you're guaranteed to return to Sremski Karlovci. The Patriarchate Court, House of Common Funds, now a seminary. Another Spomanic, last one for the day. Monument to Fallen NOB Fighters by, again, Pavle Radovanovic. Serbian Orthodox School. This is the Roman Catholic Church of the Holy Trinity. It was built in 1768, Baroque style. Finally, goat cheese. Three types of goat cheese. The famous Frischka Gora goat cheese. Chicken liver wrapped in bacon. What's that? Fried cheese. Sremski <laughs> Karlovci has a Kuglov festival. This is a Kuglov. This cake, Kuglov goes back to the 1600s, and since then, over 400 recipes have been amassed, all from this town, Thremski Karlovci, crazy people, crazy town. Now, walking home, and we'll call it a night for you. For day number four in Vrškogora area, we are leaving, going back home to Vršac today. But first, a final walk in Sremski Karlovci. It was at this spot that the famous Karlovci Treaty was concluded between the forces of the Christian Alliance and the Ottoman Empire. This was after the Great Vienna War. You know, it was the first time in official world diplomacy that a round table was used. Isn't that something? This church here, the Chapel of Peace, was built afterward to commemorate the location. Museum of Beekeeping. Who'd have thunk? For a new life, uh, it's 
apitherapy is very good for me, everything is bees poison, all products in Bihai, pollen, propolis, royal jelly, honey, everything. And he started writing letters with the biggest beekeeper in the Europe, for instance, Barlow Bellash, and after that, the Jason. And Professor invent first more than Bihai on this part of the Europe, you can see this what I for thanks bees for a new life. Professor built church behind this is actual dessert wine and he said inside for this type of wine is a medical wine. First book for uh, beekeeping is a beekeeper. I just used to squeeze it. Look at this. So uh, Tito yes, uh, Tito gave this to the uh, the guide's uh, grandfather. Yes, but everything is a uh, but bees work are working. This there is one of the oldest wine cellars. Look at all the mold. Look at all the mold in this cellar. Here is a uh, mold, mold. And so what do we buy here? White permit. White permit? Yes. 27 herbs and spices in this wine. And that's it for Troshka Gora. And I think that's it for Spomenix too. So if that's what you're here for, you can leave now, I release you. I'll just show some scenes of whatever we pass that's mildly interesting along the three hour drive back home to Pershitz. What I meant to say earlier was that I wasn't gonna show you any new Spomniks. I showed you this one about two years ago. This is the Black Bridge Memorial Complex, 1962. And this Spomenik is dedicated to the victims of the Novi Sad raid of this town, Jabayo. Some 660 people were tossed into the frozen waters of the nearby Tisa River by the fascist Hungarian Hunvejeg forces. The holes covering the bodies of these naked, thin figures apparently make for great birdhouses. Here's the main square in the city of Zrenjanin, and we're here to show Bianca the famous Yellow water, it's very polluted here. And uh, again, something I showed you two years ago. Sorry to bore you. Polluted tap water, yellow. So help me God, it's yellow. Just noticed on the map, Zrenjanin has a city beach. I was losing. We're driving through Echka. Do you want to see an old? Abandoned water tower yeah. slash watchtower. Yes. Yeah, there's a castle in this village. I want to see that too. So they think this water tower was built sometime in the 1800s and that it also served as a watchtower for a neighboring castle. All right, here comes the, the famous castle of the village Echka. So the story I've heard about this castle is that young Franz Liszt, the Hungarian composer and virtuoso pianist, performed here at age nine. This castle was built in 1820 and it opened as a hotel and restaurant after World War II. Imagine Liszt performing here in 1820 on that piano. This is the neglected Roman Catholic Church of St. John. And uh, we're gonna pass through another village in about 15 minutes. It's called Belo Blato, which means white mud. There's a lot of reeds in this town. Its nickname is the Reed Kingdom. 
water surface surrounding Belo Blato is seven times larger than the land surface. So, lots of reeds. The main street into town here, it's lined with Siberian elm trees, planted in the 1990s. loving the architecture in this village. There they are, the mountains of Urshatz, home sweet home. So I think this is, I think this is goodbye. Goodbye. Peace out.